Hey guys, it's Crystal Lee Moore Lucier here, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore, and I am so happy you're here. This is Realtor Life, a fun and entertaining look at life in the trenches as a real estate professional in Ontario. Let's get started. Today we're going to talk about goals, habits, and results and really what that looks like. So as a realtor, we've talked about this so many times, but as a realtor, you are your number one asset. So you're an entrepreneur, you're it. You're the CEO, you're the COO, you're the CFO. And it is very, very important to make sure that you're running your business and your whole operation as professionally and efficiently as you can. So we do spend a lot of time talking about making sure that you don't burn out, making sure that you take time to relax when you need to, but what are you doing with those hours that you are working? Are you making sure that you are as effective as you can be? So with Buffini and Company, we talk about winning the week, and there's a really cool formula that if you work two hours a day, four days a week, three weeks a month, and eight months a year, you will crush your goals and you will probably outpace your competitors. And, but what does that look like? Does that mean you just go to the office for two hours and then you kind of peace out on Fridays? I mean, it could, but what they're talking about is two actual hours of like hardcore lead generation work, which means you're on the phone, you're face to face with people, you are sending notes, you're getting it done. So you're not spending two hours just physically being in your office or scrolling Facebook, um, I heard a really funny thing. So I've been really working hard on my public speaking lately because it's a goal of mine. And so as as one does, I'm getting more more and more um, kind of deeper into lessons and tips and tricks and all of the different things that we should be focusing on. And someone said, like, when you're scrolling on Facebook, like, everyone's just trying to find the bottom. Like, where, where does it, where does the, where does the homepage end? And it's funny because obviously it doesn't end and you could literally scroll on your phone forever. Like it, it will last far longer than any of us will. And so, uh, so yeah, don't, don't spend time trying to get to the bottom, just get stuff done. But what does that look like? Welcome to this episode. Okay. So goals, habits, and results. So, um, I've talked about in the last couple of episodes, what I've been doing with thinking into results and that program with Bob Proctor and just like Tony Robbins, just like Buffini, just like Bob Proctor, like all of these people, it's kind of the same message packaged in a different way. And it really depends on what resonates with you. Hopefully I'm resonating, um, and kind of getting you excited to learn about what program might be good for you. But when it comes down to setting your goals, it can be really tough. And so what they, this, the actual statistic is pretty sad. Like if you talk to the average person and ask them if their goals, um, number one, do they know their goals? And usually people do not. And if they do know them, do they have them written down? And again, most people do not. Um, the Harvard study that they did years ago was actually having written and defined goals was actually the deciding factor as to whether or not you have a successful, long, amazing life. Um, it was also relationships. So goals and relationships. So if you look at the average person, so if you have like a, a workaholic, go, 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 you never take time for connection, you never take time for people, not good. Uh, if you're always just kind of hanging out with people and you're not getting anything done, uh, you might be happy, but um, you might not be the success that you were supposed to be. So having a good combination of those is fantastic. But when you're setting your goals, uh, if you already have your goals written, I would say go through them and figure out, are they goals or tactics? So number one with goals, make sure that you are focusing on, they say like one goal at a time. You can have a personal goal, a business goal. You could also uh, be a bit of an outside the box kind of person and say, those rules are for those people and I would like different rules. So I have three goals for myself that I focus on at a time. It doesn't mean I only have three, like there's, I have a lot of goals and I'm sure so many of us do, but what can you focus on today? Like what is the the number one? So you have the list, you're not throwing the list away, don't worry. But from that list of goals, what is the most important? And can you kind of start working towards it? 
And so oftentimes when you're just starting writing the goals, um, we, we usually put them into five categories. So you can kind of write out a goal. You can write five, but categories for personal, family, business, financial, and spiritual. And that's a good starting point because sometimes you sit down to do the goals and your mind will go blank. And that's not great because this is a creative process. And so you really want to just kind of throw away logic for a few minutes and just use your imagination. You can fantasize about whatever whatever you want. So let's say you, you really want to fly a helicopter. What if you, um, or you just want to be in a helicopter over the Grand Canyon? That would be so cool. Or you'd like to wake up in the morning and go put your feet in the ocean. Like that's a big deal to you. Or it could be, um, like for me, I'd love to speak on stage to impact more and more people. So what are the things that you want to do that at this moment, this very second in time seem impossible? Write those down because any goals, I mean, even if they seem sort of possible, it's, it really depends on what is going to kind of light that fire within you to go for it. Let's say it's a physical goal. If it's that you really want to be um, a certain, you want to lose weight, or you want to be at a certain size, what is going to kind of motivate you to get up early in the morning and to do things that maybe you don't want to do necessarily, but you're inspired by your goal. So writing down those goals is a big deal. Once you write down the goals, um, and the actually the cool way to write down your goals is as though they've already happened. And the way that was put to me today actually was that we write our goals as though they've already happened because if you write it as though it's something that's happening in the future, it will always be something happening in the future. And where do we live? Right here in the present. So it's kind of cool where the wording, if you're ever writing it down, it's I am so happy and grateful now that, and then you write the goal as though it's already happened. Um, and as a reminder, Thinking Into Results is based on the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And there's also an abridged version, which is kind of a 40 minute YouTube audio that you can download if you have YouTube music. And it is um, Earl Nightingale. And he kind of condenses the book into 40 minutes and you can listen to it. Bob Proctor listened to it every day. So I don't think it's a very bad thing to follow in Bob's footsteps. But um, when you write those goals down, the idea is write them down and then keep reading them and figure out what action steps would you need to take to make it happen. And that's where those habits come in. So for example, if you know that being successful um, at whatever it is you're doing, so whether it's your job, whether it's fitness, whatever you pick for your goals, um, getting up early in the morning, so getting up earlier, and early could be whatever, earlier than you do right now. That's all kind of they're looking for. So it really depends on what's going to do it for you. So I know sleep is also very important. So what they say is if you're planning to get up early, you're actually planning the night before to be organized. So you go to bed earlier, you're set to go so that when you get up, you can kind of just get going. Um, but let's say it's waking up earlier or it's making sure you drink eight glasses of water a day, limiting caffeine, uh, getting your calls done, getting your notes done. Um, Bob Proctor, when he talked about trainings that he used to do, I believe it's an insurance company, he made sure everyone was kind of face to face with a prospective client by 9 a.m. every day. That's a big deal. Um, it, and it depends on the type of clients you have. If your clients don't really want to see you at 9 a.m. in the morning, then that's okay. It, it doesn't, that's the best part about being an entrepreneur is that it can really, um, it can really be customized to what you want, right? So that's that's the thing. But pick those habits because the actions you need to take and the habits you're going to start creating, that's all going to combine to give you the results that you want. And the thing is like having a goal and then just kind of saying, this is what I want. So let's say I want, I want a yacht. But I mean, a few big problems. Number one, a yacht is like crazy expensive. So there's that. Then there'd be like, am I going to, like, am I hiring a crew to sail the yacht or am I going to learn to get, I don't know, a boating license? Like all of these things, you just want to make sure, like, is there specialized knowledge that you need? And 
what exactly are you going to do to get these things? So it really comes down to making sure that you're kind of excited about a goal, but then you're willing to put the work in to make it happen. So if it's an award level you want, like what's cool about with real estate agents um, and real estate brokerages, they have all of these award levels. Now, some people say they're silly. Um, that's fine, they can say that. But it's just something to strive for. So whatever goal it is, it feels good to achieve something. So you set the goal, you work hard, you achieve it, and that feels good. And that, that good feeling is a momentum thing. So it keeps pushing you forward, you keep going, you keep going. And that's the thing, like it's, you always wanna be working towards something. Um, and a lot of people like will kind of, they'll get into a plateau or it will be a stale goal because it's not exciting anymore. So if you're just doing the same thing all the time and kind of ho-hum, not appreciating it, that's not good. Because the thing is like, if we don't appreciate things, we'll lose them. But also there's a way to keep everything exciting and new and really make sure that you're working towards your purpose and your passion. So when you're trying to figure out those goals, one of the other tips, because it can be tough, like if you're not in a goal setting workshop, it can be like you sit there with a piece of paper and go, I don't know what my goals are. Um, one of the things, the I'm reading the, um, the Saint, the Surfer and the CEO by Robin Sharma, very good book. But one of the suggestions, um, I believe the surfer suggests is a story about a man like on a journey and he meets these three people. So the surfer is the second one. Um, but he suggests that you start doing the things that both make you laugh and make you feel happy and the things that bring tears to your eyes. So what makes you emotional? Um, is there, I know sometimes I will listen to music. Like for me, it's symphony orchestra. It's just, it just gets me. I don't love opera, but symphony orchestra, especially like film symphony orchestra. So good. Um, or a sunset. Like the other day I was just, I was driving. My mom used to always make us pull over on the road to see like the moon or the sun or something cool. But I was driving to see a client and all of a sudden the sun was this like huge, just round orange circle. This was like 8 p.m. at night. So it was about to set, but it was just directly in front of me. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I literally tried to pull over, take a photo in those few seconds. It was gone. Like it was just like a cloud had come over and it was the moment was gone. So that's just in my memory forever. But what are the things that do that to you? Is it a song? Is it a, is it a person? Is it a movie, a poem? Um, is it maybe playing music? Is it walking? Is it swimming? Is it playing like puzzles or painting? Like whatever it is, he says, figure out, because we're all unique, but figure out those things that you love to do and that really speak to you and start doing them. And then let your mind kind of wander because your purpose, your passions will be more clear to you when you're doing the things that make your heart sing. So like you open up your mind, you open up your heart and the answers come. It sounds like a little, a little corny. I know I'm sure it does, but um, what's the downside? You do things you love and it's, and you don't discover your purpose. Oh, well, then you're doing stuff that you love, but I'm pretty sure that it's sound advice. Um, and I know for me, like I get my best ideas if I'm walking or if I'm uh, painting or if I do a puzzle, um, it can be very relaxing. And I was just at a client's house and he and his wife just do like they love puzzling. So they've done like all these puzzles and they turn them into artwork. So puzzling is fun. But when we talk about your goals, so take some time. And I know it's easy for me to just say, oh, take some time. And where are you going to find the time? I would say carve out like 10 minutes every morning for you. So I use that time for me. I journal. I read 10 pages of my book um, and and I try to listen as well. So not just 10 minutes, but I also try to listen to 20 minutes of something motivational. So right now I'm doing thinking into results, but if it's not that, it's a podcast or it's an audio book, but something to just keep those juices flowing. Um, and that leads me right into the weekly activities and daily activities. So when we create habits, like the habit, um, I think it's, I'm going to say Aristotle, um, I'm hoping I'm right, 
but um, excellence is a habit. So it's like something you repeatedly do and you make it happen. And so what you can do is pick a few things that you're going to start implementing into your life. So I just, I started with a couple of mine. I make sure I'm having um, enough water during the day. So I, I make sure the first thing in the morning I'm having water. Then I journal. My journal is also praying. Yours does not have to be, but it's kind of like, it's my gratitude list. It's everything. I also have my affirmations in there and I have a whole page in my journal for every single day. Um, and then I also read the 10 pages and I listen to something great. Um, ideally I try to listen while I'm like moving my body. So if I'm walking and the, uh, Damon West said like every single day and Damon West, um, is the guy that helped, uh, bring the coffee bean analogy to the world. And just to remind everyone, uh, being like a coffee bean means you are changing the world. You aren't just being changed by it. So thank you to Damon. He said that every day you want to exercise your mind, exercise your spirit, and exercise your body. So those are the three things daily you want to do. And that can look like when you're exercising your spirit, that can be meditating. It can be praying. It can be really the world is your oyster, but something that's going to center you. So when you're picking your daily activities, those are important. And it also, so that's for personal, but your daily activities for work as well. So for me, I need to call at least, um, I believe five or seven clients a day. I need to write three personal notes and do two pop buys. So the pop buys, um, I've had different things over the years. Right now I'm doing the uh, pardon me, liquid IV. So liquid IV is like all the rage. So we bought a package and I've been handing them out. And as hoped, people are very excited about them because it's kind of expensive to buy them for yourself. But when someone gives you something cool to try, then that's a fun, a fun little add on. So I just put my stickers on them and my sticker just has my name and my, so it has my name info, phone number, email, all that fun stuff. And they just stick right on everything. Fantastic. So then you're also going to go with your weekly activities. So weekly activities could be like for me, I do a weekly update for my coach. So I have created, I did this a few years ago, but I created kind of a four page document. Sounds intense. Don't get, don't freak out. It's once you create the first time, you're just filling in numbers but it says like, um, how many closings I have coming up. How, it lists all my clients, like buyers and sellers. Um, it also says my goals for the year. We also have, uh, meetings that I'm leading or times that I'm speaking. Um, we also talk about ideas and, and I will also put in kind of things that I might be needing from my coach that happens on Mondays. And I also do an abundance plan, which outlines my entire financial situation, business and personal. And so for me, that's a weekly activity that I do to stay on top of things. Yours can be different, but the, what's nice is that you do it, you check it off, and then you know it's done. And by doing that, I'm reminding myself that I run a business and my business is my real estate business, but that's the, like, I'm in business for myself and I am the CEO of this company and we run it as such. So the next thing we're going to talk about really quick is while you're doing all these things, having a mastermind group. So making sure that you're surrounding yourself with other like-minded professionals. I created a, net, a networking group called Rise, and this is women in business. So we're all business owners. There are now 16 of us. We meet once a month and we connect to help each other with um, support and growth. But also when we're struggling with things, we can kind of share as a group and you have other people that are kind of in the arena with you. So it's very, it's very powerful. And Napoleon Hill talks about having a mastermind. It's, it doesn't have to be people in your industry. It can be because I also run a mastermind in my office with other realtors. So it's just the idea that no man is an Island. We can all connect and we can all help each other. So it's a good idea to start thinking, who would you want in a mastermind with you? And then just to, to wrap it all up, just as a reminder, what we talked about today. So goals, habits, and results, make sure you're focusing on your weekly activities and your daily activities. And if you need to find somewhere to check those off, that's fantastic. I use just a regular, um, Hillroy three, uh, three subject notebook. I love it. 
and that is what I do. But however you're going to track it, it could be on a note app on your on your phone if you really wanted it to be. Um, and then just make sure that you pick a mastermind. But as a reminder, every day, make sure you're doing something for your mind, something for your uh, spirit, and something for your body. So I'm Crystal Lee Moore Lucier, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore. This is Realtor Life. So happy you joined us today, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.